total mind control, Manchurian candidates. Could such things actually be possible? Could someone you know, or perhaps even yourself, have hidden programmed identities deep within the mind? Imagine finding out that you've got disassociated parts of yourself that are Satanists. Not only is it possible, it is happening now and on an unimaginable scale. MK Ultra Mind Control rules in Hollywood. Some celebrities, professional athletes, spies, politicians, as well as common citizens, police officers, taxi drivers, etc., are under total mind control, undetectable slavery. This mind control is totally undetectable. These mind control victims have multiple fragmented identities capable of carrying out a variety of tasks with no later memory of the event. Most never discover what they truly are or how they have been controlled. Mind control is a sliding scale and can come in many forms, from everyday information control as we see with the corporate controlled media, to brainwashing, to drugs, hypnosis, and total mind control. The most extreme form of mind control, trauma-based mind control, uses hypnosis, torture, and drugs to create a total mind controlled slave. The brain, being the incredible computer that it is, creates amnesic barriers around events that would be too damaging for the conscious mind to process. Often, a returning veteran will be unable to remember parts of his deployment. Someone injured in a horrific car accident will likely not remember the entire ordeal. The brain walls off memory surrounding events much like the partitioning of a computer hard drive. By taking advantage of this mechanism within the brain, Programmers can create completely dissociated parts within the mind that function totally unaware of one another. The secret lies in dissociation. This special ability within the mind is what allows Navy SEALs to lie motionless for extreme periods, Indian Fakirs to walk on red-hot coals, and, as the Spanish learned during the Inquisition, prevent some from feeling pain during torture. Multiple personality disorder, now called DID, is caused by trauma at a young age and can be created deliberately or by accident. Most people can dissociate to some degree, but only a few can create completely dissociated identities. These are the people mind control programmers look for, a dissociative. When put under extreme conditions, why do some people survive and not others? What gives some the ability to rise to the occasion? It is an ability, what some call a gift, and through trauma, this ability can be honed, developed, so that the person becomes more than what they were before, a monarch. It was discovered that this ability could be passed genetically from one generation to the next. Children of multi-generational abuse, for instance, already have a well-developed ability to dissociate. Elite bloodline families traveled to exotic locales such as India and Tibet to study Eastern philosophy, especially yogis and the Tibetan Buddhist who have an excellent ability to dissociate. They learned the secrets of abuse, dissociation and its hereditary properties and set out to pass this gift from generation to generation, a practice that continues to this day. One of the key tip-offs for scientists that memory and dissociation could be passed from one generation to the next was the monarch butterfly. Each year, monarch butterflies from across North America make an incredible journey. From as far north as Canada, millions of butterflies descend on a small plot of land in Mexico for the winter. Once spring arrives, they begin the long journey back. The kicker? It takes three generations of monarchs to make the 2,500 mile journey. No butterfly making the return journey has ever flown that route before. So how do they know where to go? The answer lies in what researchers call epigenetic memory. Memories learned by parents which are then passed genetically to their children. Due to their remarkable ability to pass information genetically, 
as well as the fluttering feeling often described during dissociation. The monarch butterfly is the international symbol for trauma-based mind control. Trauma-based mind control victims are told to think of the programming experience as that of going into a cocoon. The cocoon is not pleasant, but as a result, a beautiful butterfly emerges. Victims tend to identify with the monarch butterfly. For this reason, the deliberate creation of programmed alter identities is known as monarch programming. Once aware, one will begin to notice butterfly symbolism at an alarming frequency in popular media and culture. Originally, only old occult families possessed the ability to completely dissociate and create multiples. Elite families to this day breed with other such families who have also been into ritual child abuse. This is where secret societies and occult groups come in. Organizations which have, throughout generations, not only curated and cultivated this secret knowledge, but facilitated its practice. These families are multi-generational Satanists, meaning that each generation has belonged to a satanic coven of some kind going back centuries, and the creation of multiples is part of rituals they have performed since antiquity. Programmers have codified these ancient practices into a specific methodology for the deliberate creation of multiple personalities, also known as trauma-based mind control. The ability to dissociate and create multiples only grows stronger with each generation that is subjected to abuse. These elite families view the ability to dissociate as a valuable endowment that must be passed carefully from one generation to the next. While this ability may be passed genetically, it must be activated through childhood trauma. Without the trauma that abuse and torture create, the mind never fully develops its dissociative ability to the point of creating multiples. Extensive testing is done at a young age to gauge their ability to dissociate. Programmers will not spend time trying to split a mind that cannot dissociate. It would be a waste. Once the programmers have built a good dissociative ability and highly hypnotizable base, they can exploit this mechanism within the mind to create alter identities completely tailored to their liking. While only 20% of the general population is easily hypnotized, trauma makes one highly hypnotizable. Through trauma and hypnosis, multiple dissociated parts will be created. Some will think they are little children, animals, or even gems and stones. Each one will have their own talents and abilities to lend to the set of altars known as the system. These altars can now be called up at any time their handler wishes, by a code phrase, color, or sound. Once these altars have been created and triggers implanted correctly, the programmer has essentially a human robot. But how are these human robots used, and for what nefarious purposes? All that and more after this. For what purpose would government and private organizations create these human robots? The mind control victims are programmed to perform any command no matter how painful or demeaning, without pause or emotion, and are capable of remembering endless lists of information or record and playback conversations exactly like a tape recorder. A killing machine with superhuman strength, stamina, and fighting abilities, they will have no regret or remorse because they won't be able to remember it. These high-level mind-controlled slaves are expensive and time-consuming to create, but if done correctly, can be the perfect assassin, actress, golf player, sex slave, patsy or soldier. Some elite create program multiples to be used in porn, snuff films, or as celebrity cash cows, earning their owners many times what they cost to create. Performers have grueling schedules, 15 or more hours a day, sometimes across multiple time zones. It helps if they have the extreme stamina these programmed multiples possess. When the front personality gets exhausted, another identity can take its place. Many in the entertainment industry, both male and female, are mind-controlled multiples. I go to Hollywood parties or, you know, occasionally I go to Oscar parties and things like that. And people, big stars, people will grab me by the arm and take me aside and say, I just want to thank you for the things you say. And it blows my mind, but that, that's the culture. It's a culture of fear for sure. 
um, you know, and, and it's a, a big culture of uh, mind control too. MK Ultra mind control rules in Hollywood. If if you don't know, Google that and look into it. Imagine creating a soldier that could stay up for days on end, possess superhuman strength, stamina, and fighting abilities, or a spy whose front altar was just a mild-mannered archaeologist. If ever captured and pressed for information, these super soldiers, spies, could never access any sensitive information within their system, and would likely switch into altars who would not only enjoy the torture, but taunt their abuser. This has a powerful psychological effect on the enemy. A common role for those subjected to trauma-based mind control is that of a courier. Handlers pull up an alter identity within the system, who records word for word a conversation or message, which can then be sealed with a passphrase and sent to deliver the clandestine message. Mind control victim Kathy O'Brien talks extensively about her use as a secret courier, among other things, for President Reagan. Like an addict needing a stronger hit, the ruling elite must turn to increasingly bizarre and disturbing sex acts to satisfy their fiendish obsessions. High-level mind control multiples usually have sexual alters, known as betas, trained to satisfy the perversions of the elite. If necessary, mind controlled multiples can create new alters on the spot to perform a particularly odious task. Monarch slaves are frequently used in snuff films and other sick porn distributed through the black market or dark web. Known as beta alters, these personalities are void of any inhibitions. Hypersexualized personalities, oftentimes in the form of a cat, are used for porn, prostitution, and even as party favors. This is what Stanley Kubrick portrayed in his controversial film Eyes Wide Shut, which featured an elite occult sex party that eerily mirrored that of an actual private event held by the Rothschilds in the 70s. A common use for male monarch slaves is that of a patsy or lone nut. These sleeper agents can be called up and told to be at a certain place at a certain time and they will obey robotically. Many mind-controlled slaves have excellent marksman altars programmed inside Others merely show up afterwards and take the blame. John Lennon is dead, shot several times by a young American as he was going into his home in New York. After killing John Lennon, Mark David Chapman calmly pulled out a copy of Catcher in the Rye and began reading. Later, Reagan's attempted assassin would also be apprehended in the same book. Lee Harvey Oswald was found with only four books in his possession, one of which was, you guessed it, Catcher in the Rye. In the 1997 thriller Conspiracy Theory, Mel Gibson, possibly a multiple himself, plays a crazed CIA mind control victim obsessed with Catcher in the Rye. Mind control researchers have suggested Salinger's classic novel was used as a mind control programming tool. Another useful role for programmed multiples is that of an agent provocateur, one whose job it is to infiltrate organizations or groups, spy and create disruption and infighting. Monarch slaves will often have an alter identity that records everything the person hears and can repeat it all back to a handler. This makes them quite useful as a mole. They will have a personality who is programmed to genuinely want to join whatever group they would like to infiltrate, be it religious or political organization or even a business. Their personal beliefs and views will align with the chosen organization so much so that they not only fit in but become valued members. All the while, unknowingly, alters are reporting back to whatever agency or secret society to which they may secretly belong. Trauma-based mind control victims are often used as drug mules to transport illicit substances across state lines and around the world. Convincing front alters would honestly believe they were carrying makeup powder or whatever they have been hypnotically programmed to think. The globalist cabal of elite controllers who make up the secret societies, military intelligence agencies, and banking cartels ruthlessly pursue control over those they deem important to their plans. A popular form of domination is blackmail. Monarch slaves are often sent to seduce a politician, world leader, or anyone considered important to the hierarchy's agenda. Once compromised, 
These people will now be completely controlled under the threat of pictures or video being released. Sometimes compromised individuals will be cultivated to highly powerful positions because they are completely controlled by the horrible crimes for which they are being blackmailed. This is exactly what happened recently with Dennis Hassert before he was thrown under the bus and it all came to light. Hassert was a high school gym coach with a grungy armchair next to the boy's shower. He became a politician and was elevated to Speaker of the House, all while being totally controlled by blackmail because of his previous child abuse. Do you know who comes after the Vice President in ascension to be the President? It's Speaker of the House. Dennis Haster came from nowhere as a high school wrestling coach, courted to become a key member of Congress and then the Speaker of the House from nowhere. And why was that? Because he was part of the pedophile guild that loves to rape young boys. And that big, disgusting sack of rotten horse pus, no words can describe him, that's too easy. Dennis Hastert gets one year for paying hush money to a bunch of kids on the high school and middle school wrestling team. Monarch multiples are not single purpose appliances, but biological robots containing alters capable of performing any task their programmer might anticipate. While Monarch mind control is solely a 20th century creation, its predecessors date back to ancient Egypt and Babylon. The Egyptian Book of the Dead explicitly described methods of torture and intimidation to create trauma, the use of drugs and hypnotism, ultimately resulting in total enslavement of the initiate. It would, however, be the Nazis and their sinister scientist who turned association into a science and mind control into an art. Psychiatrists such as the notorious Dr. Joseph Mengele conducted horrific experiments on concentration camp inmates in an effort to refine their mind control techniques. Many Holocaust survivors had nightmares of Mingala and the experiments they had been a part of. Some loved him as a father figure all their lives due to the trauma bonding they had received as part of their programming. They discovered that through traumatization, different personalities or dissociated parts could be created who do not know each other but can take the body at different times. After the war, these Nazi psychiatrists were brought to the U.S. through what was known as Project Paperclip. Project Paperclip was the code name under which the U.S. intelligence and military services extracted German Nazi scientists during and after the final stages of World War II. Mingala, along with other Nazi doctors and psychiatrists, now continued to experiment and develop trauma-based mind control for the Americans. Under what would later become known as MKUltra, the United States government systematically drugged, tortured, and murdered their own citizens for decades. Exposed in the 70s through lawsuits filed by Canadian survivors, MKUltra ultimately included over 150 operations, all relating to behavior modification, trauma, brainwashing, drugs, blackmail, and mind control experiments. Among these mind control experiments orchestrated by Nazi war criminals, were continuations of the trauma-based programming which creates dissociated identities. Rape, electroshock, drugs, and hypnosis were all used by the CIA to create their very own mind-controlled multiples. A criminal faction within the U.S. government, devoid of any conscious or feeling of personal responsibility, tortured and programmed children to create valuable mind control assets. Most researchers believe these programs continue secretly to this day. The CIA's original plans to research mind control was to determine psychological and chemical means of creating the perfect spy, which quickly evolved into production of the perfect soldier, perfect assassin, and eventually, slave. With the introduction of Nazi research, particularly that of SS officer and occultic Heinrich Himmler and Joseph Mengele, it was determined that absolute mind control could be reached through specific tortures beginning at a young age. Armed with this nefarious information, U.S., German, and British psychiatrists embarked on a new yet ancient form of total mind control. Disturbingly, instead of ending in 1973 as the U.S. government claims, 
Closer research shows the program merely involved into what was known as Project Monarch. MKUltra was a broad study into a wide variety of mind control techniques, and Monarch was its logical outgrowth, taking the most effective methodologies and applying them to the creation of a total mind-controlled slave, a true Manchurian candidate. Today, mind control multiples are still being created at a scale never before imagined. They are in all walks of life. The entertainment industry in particular is known to be filled with monarch multiples. One reason mind control is prevalent within the entertainment industry is because they are able to control the powerful influence these entertainers possess over the public. Not only can messages disseminated through music and films be controlled, they can then have celebrities create distractions to divert public attention. Many entertainers have shown scars and behavior consistent with that of trauma-based mind control victims. Today, a multitude of groups and organizations are performing trauma-based mind control on victims of all walks of life. But how are these mind control multiples created? In just a moment, the disturbing details. The hideous process of creating a monarch typically begins at a young age. Children of elite, multi-generational occultic families will be traumatized starting in the womb, sometimes even going so far as to induce a premature birth. Experts have likened splitting the mind to splitting wood. Getting an initial split going is rather difficult, but once you have a crack beginning to form, it gets easier with each strike. Likewise, the elite know that if they can traumatize the mind when it is young, it will split easier and dissociate more quickly. For this reason, elite families will put a mouse trap on their baby's hand while in the crib and not go into the room to remove it until the infant stops crying. This teaches the baby's mind to dissociate from pain, which is then rewarded with mommy's attention. If not born into this madness, testing will typically take place to gauge the ability to dissociate. Sometimes, people from domestically abusive environments will be chosen specifically because of their heightened dissociative abilities. The second aspect that must be considered is IQ. A great deal of intelligence and creativity is required to create these dissociated personalities. Personality tests, along with IQ, ultimately determine the child's future role. Once the candidate has been selected, preparation will begin. While multi-generational victims inherit the mental structuring required to begin programming, others must be conditioned. Controllers will begin expanding the child's mind as soon as it is born, teaching it not only to create images, but associate a smell or sound with memory. Creativity and intelligence are gently enhanced. The child will be taught discipline and trained to be able to hold still and keep their eyes open for long periods. This will be helpful later during EEG testing. For the first year and a half, the monarch child is smothered with love in what is known as the love bombing phase. Once a good ability to dissociate and an IQ of at least 120 is confirmed, programmers will proceed with the first step, shattering the core. In direct contrast to the absolute love and attention the child has received thus far, he or she will now be alone, tortured and abused. Loud noise and various smells will overwhelm the brain's sensory input. After some time, the primary programmer or handler, who has thus far shown only kindness towards the child, will arrive. To the victim, this is a welcome sight. It appears help has arrived. This time, however, the programmer will brutally traumatize the victim. The shock shatters the mind like glass. The brain simply cannot reconcile these two extremely opposite behaviors from the same person. The cognitive dissonance is too great. Experts have learned this is how the core is split. Once the splitting of the core is accomplished, the mind can be divided and compartmentalized through further abuse and trauma. As the victim's programming begins, it is meticulously monitored, charts are kept, and programming schedules are set. Programmers will use specific tortures to create splits. The conscious mind, which makes us who we are, takes flight and essentially says, I can't handle anymore, I'm out of here. When this happens, the unconscious is left wide open and the victim is left in a dangerously suggestible state. Dissociation creates the opening of the unconscious. This vulnerable state is characterized by rapid eye movement, heightened sensitivity to shadows or surrounding movement. The subject is highly hypnotizable and can be told to create new parts within its mind. The fractured, dissociated mind has no ability to question what is being told. You get tortured far enough or traumatized far enough, your dominant personality 
just goes to sleep. And what's left, and this is a normal human reaction to excessive trauma to protect you, and what's left is a very childlike persona of yourself from when you're about five or six. Yeah. And you have no ability to resist, you're vulnerable, and then that's when they hypnotize you. Dissociation is the key to all this. In this state, it is easy for the victim to go into shock and die, so life signs are closely monitored. Should anything go wrong, programming centers are well equipped to resuscitate the victim. According to author and researcher Fritz Springmeier, sensory overload via lights, sounds, and smells are all used to help put the brain into a dissociative programmable state. With each new split, new alters can be created to reflect whatever the programmer wants. White fluffy rabbits, kittens, people, or even a doorknob. Movies featuring animal characters and anthropomorphic objects such as candlesticks, doorknobs, aid the young mind in creating these dehumanized identities. Some alters will be perpetual toddlers, others will be allowed to mature with age. All serve a purpose within the system. Ritualistic abuse, such as that found in satanic cults, is itself a trauma. The chanting, incense robes, and sheer terror frequently create a split. A skilled hypnotherapist can input phrases, codes, and specific tones used to trigger the newly created altar at any time. Some programming centers have elaborate facilities designed for maximum hypnotic and lighting effect. Heated saltwater sensory deprivation tanks create weightlessness and put subjects into an out-of-body state, which can then be used by programmers to speak directly to the unconscious mind. A monarch multiple's mind will be divided into many parts. If the programmer wishes, a single trauma could create 10 or more similar alters, the strongest few of which will be developed and programmed for various purposes. Alter systems are kept in place via an elaborate web of anchors, threats, and hypnotic reinforcement. When the smell of freshly baked bread evokes a childhood memory and results in feelings of happiness, that is known as an emotional anchor. Our lives are filled with emotional anchors that produce a certain emotional state. Anchors are often familiar smells or sounds, like, for instance, that of an alarm clock. Programmers have developed an advanced understanding of how the mind and all its idiosyncrasies create emotional anchors, which can then be used to trigger the slave. They pick up the phone one day, they hear the words red dog, and this is a post-hypnotic suggestion that makes them act out some covert plan. For instance, the smell of a certain incense may serve as an anchor to trigger a satanic altar programmed through ritual abuse. Everyday symbols such as diamonds, infinity loops, and song lyrics are used to reinforce the victim's programming. Most front altars are programmed not to remember their abuse, and the fear of remembering helps reinforce their programming, preventing the mind from pulling itself together. The roots of all thoughts, emotions, and behaviors is a connection between neurons within the brain. Neurons communicate via electrical impulses called brain waves, which vary depending on the subject's state of mind. Brain waves are like musical notes. The low frequency waves resonate deeply like a penetrating drum beat, while the higher frequency brain waves are a high pitched flute. Brain waves change frequency according to what we're doing and feeling. Alters are programmed in at each frequency. Alpha is the regular programming known as base personality modification. It is characterized by extremely pronounced memory retention, substantially increased physical strength, and several times visual acuity. Alpha is used to train and condition the perfect spy. These alters can have up to 40 times visual acuity and five times the physical strength of a normal man. These are used for corporate and government espionage because of their photographic recall and ability to record volumes of information. They can also be used to store data like a computer. Some alters are used to record volumes of sports statistics so they can be shown off and used as entertainment at parties. Beta is the sexual programming level, void of inhibitions or moral convictions. These alters are often cat-like. Known as sex kittens, many female entertainers have beta programming. Billionaires and power brokers will pay huge sums to sleep with a gorgeous celebrity, so getting a monarch slave into the entertainment industry can be very lucrative for their owners. 
The Delta Wavelength is used to program super soldiers and assassins. The programming is designed to create agents devoid of fear or self-preservation, capable of incredible feats of physical endurance and hand-to-hand -hand combat. One who kills, and if caught, self-destructs. Programmed at the Delta level are trained assassins. For those who refuse to accept that US intelligence would torture their own people, simply imagine the value and effectiveness of a marksman with 40 times visual acuity and unparalleled skill and determination. Some of these hidden altars are highly trained super soldiers who complete their mission and return home never remembering the event. You could have a person who would be able to commit assassinations for you or do any other kind of important work like courier work. And if they get caught, you can just give them up. It's not a problem uh, because they themselves don't even know what they did. It's the ultimate tool for any spy agency. Others, once their mission is complete, are programmed to await arrest or kill themselves, such as lone gunmen. According to whistleblowers and researchers, military intelligence, CIA, secret societies such as the Freemasons, satanic cults, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and British intelligence are some of the primary organizations carrying out mind control today. However, only a fraction of those associated with these agencies ever have knowledge of such programs. But how do organizations, individuals, and cults committing these atrocities obtain their victims? The frightening answer after this. Where do the victims of horrific total mind control come from? Some are born into intergenerational abusive families where abuse and dissociation has been carried on for many generations. Jay-Z states in his song Spiritual, Pray your father's father wasn't touching his little daughter, creating transgenerational trauma, that shit'll haunt ya. The transgenerational trauma to which Jay-Z is referring is known as epigenetic memory. Epigenetic memory is trauma stored in DNA passed on through generations and is what allows these families to pass on the ability to dissociate. This is why children from old European satanic Luciferian families are sought after for programming Originally, this mind control was done for centuries on their own children. The ability to dissociate and, and create multiple personality disorder is inherited. You see, if you traumatize most children with the, with the programming traumas that they start with, most children just die. And then there's a few children that would actually manage to, to stay alive and go crazy. There's only a small percentage of the population that is born with the disassociative abilities and the intelligence to be able to creatively say, this isn't happening to me. They get a psychotic break in the mind. They say, it's not happening to me. The center of the mind creates dissociated pieces to take the trauma. And then the programmers go in and find those dissociated pieces and create multiple personality disorder. Often, these parents believe in the gift of dissociation and are happy to allow that ability to be enhanced through programming. These cults also breed children specifically for use as monarch victims. Some are kept and used solely as breeders for the coven. Their babies belong to the cult and are programmed or sacrificed. As sickening and unbelievable as it sounds, bearing children for use in satanic rituals may really be happening. These women say they speak from personal experience. They claim to be breeders, forced by covens to bear children, both as a way for the cults to get new members and to find fresh victims for ritual murder. Did you give birth to infants who were sacrificed? To my first two. Were sacrificed? Were sacrificed. I was told it was the highest honor I could mm -hmm. ever do as a woman was to sacrifice my first two. Jackie tells us she was able to escape her satanic cult. Today she helps other women, like Donna, who are trying to break free. You killed your babies? Um... Just take the skin off. You skin the baby? You take the baby's skin off? Do you feel remorse? Have you told the police? I had to do what I had to do, or I'd be killed like... Like the babies that, that they 
that they made me watch killed and that they put in my hand. They said, obey or this is you. Army Navy parents will sell their children into the program. A person need not be cruel or even abusive to give their child to such programs. Rather, all that is required is a desire for advancement and a misguided sense of patriotism. You know, a lot of the parents that got involved with the CIA MK Ultra program turned their children over willingly for various reasons. They might approach a parent and say, uh, we have this experimental uh, method where we can make your child uh, and a genius and we can make them a success in life and would you sign the paperwork here to allow us to use your child. Those who possess a heightened ability to dissociate will produce children with a heightened ability. They will be offered a unique opportunity to make their child part of an exclusive program. The parents who do are highly rewarded both in rank and compensation. Some view it as a patriotic sacrifice to their country and idealize their son being some super soldier. Others are blackmailed. They might do this in conjunction if they found a father that was sexually molesting his child, they would say, okay, we won't send you to prison if you'll work with us. We'll make you rich, but we need your child for this experiment and, and it's a win-win because you won't go to prison and your child will become a genius and uh, will become a will make your child into a success. One of the most prominent victims and whistleblowers, Kathy O'Brien, was brought into the program through blackmail. Her father was caught distributing child pornography of her through the U.S. mail. When this one particular politician came to my father and told him he could receive immunity from prosecution if he would sell me into MK Ultra Mind Control, my father was thrilled. He, he agreed to sell me into the project and was trained in how to raise me for MK Ultra. Many parents have a notion that the ends justifies the means that if this sacrifice is made, their child will have a possibility of becoming a famous actress, politician, or celebrity. Still, others are kidnapped right off the street. And police pointed a gun at a woman's head and tried to force her into his van. Inside, a metal cage. Metal cage. He was wearing a dark-colored hoodie-style sweatshirt and jeans. Now, the van is described as a full-size van, white, with no windows on the side. It uh, also had a California license plate. And as you said, Sarah, the most disturbing thing is a possible black cage within that van. Two boys said that when they were on their way home from school, a man in a white van asked them to come to the van and come to him. Uh, of course, they did the right thing and you know, yelled and got out of there as quick as they could. Fox 2's Paul Shankman is live in Rock Hill to explain why they want everyone in that area watching out for one particular white van. White van. Beside him at the curb, the sliding door opened in the back and a white male yelled, get in. That unsettling report comes from an 11-year-old boy who says there were actually three men in that van when it pulled up next to him near the intersection of North Rock Hill Road and Euclid. The boy immediately took off running for three blocks until he got to school. I told the principal what happened and she called the cops. Within a couple hours, a recorded message was sent to the parents of Lawrence Elementary students. Quote, a white van was parked on the side of the road. The girls walked on and the van followed them. The girls became nervous and returned to school. We called the police who are now investigating. And then it was just scary because the very next day is when the other little girl came up missing. <laughs> Eight-year-old Demetrius Madison is smiling and laughing once again, but just over 24 hours ago, he was nearly kidnapped by four men in a black van who approached him at the Alameda Park Apartments. Monarch victim Bryce Taylor wrote in her book, Thanks for the Memories, that she, as a little girl, would be used to lure other children into a vehicle for kidnapping. I can publicly testify that what these children are saying is reality. And I can also say that I was used even as a child on Ventura Boulevard uh, near the Corbin Bowl 
to coerce children that were my age into um, black sedans where the men had um, TVs and candy and all kinds of things that I was told to lure children into the cars and they would happen to be shopping with their mom um, walking along the boulevard there and then I would say something like, um, would you like some candy? And there's a TV in the back of this car, do you want to come and see it? And as soon as this child would approach the car, the men would throw them in the back seat and take off. And then often I witnessed as these children would be kept contained in cages. The actual number of missing children and adults in the U.S. and Canada is mind-blowing. While monarch victims have down-to-earth convincing front altars, many of their altar identities exist in some form of sci-fi world that keeps their slaves far from reality and their true identity. The scripts of popular movies are often used to solidify the fantasy world within the victim's mind. A mind control script is like the operating software upon which the rest of the system is built. The most common mind control scripts include Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Alien Abduction, among others. On these fictional scripts, programmers build entire worlds into which the altars are placed. The victim's mind is so tormented they will accept anything. They are told to construct in their mind completely fictional worlds in which altars dwell. Victims often contain Alice in Wonderland or Wizard of Oz themed programming. These storylines work perfectly for the theme of dissociation, as both characters enter alternate universes ultimately created within their own mind. The same occurs with monarch programming. Victims are told to escape deeper into their own mind to a fictional world of the programmers creating. To escape the tortures, alters go over the rainbow, or in the case of Alice in Wonderland, through the looking glass. This is when the conscious mind takes flight. Military monarchs commonly have Star Wars or Star Trek themed programming. It is not uncommon for monarch victims to be obsessed with these fictional worlds. They may know entire parts by heart or spend hours totally immersed in the Star Wars Star Trek universe and know countless intricate details about them. Another popular theme for trauma-based mind control is alien abduction. Many of those who report abduction stories are in fact victims of trauma-based mind control. The brain instinctively wants to pull itself back together and the more distance the alters are from reality, the further they are from realizing their true self. The types of alters built into a monarch system vary depending on the intended role and occupation of the slave. Common alters include sex kittens, data or library alters are used to store volumes of information, ritual alters perform rituals and satanic rites as part of whichever cult or secret society to which they may belong, often involving sacrifice. Regardless of the viewer's personal religious opinions, these elite cult members truly believe and perform certain ceremonies accordingly. Deaf and mute alters prevent the rest of the system from hearing secret conversations. Suicide alters are programmed to kill themselves if caught by an enemy or begin remembering and realizing what they truly are. Animal alters think they are animals or animal hybrids. Seemingly normal front alters fool anyone with whom they may come in contact. Front alters will be very convincing and have absolutely no recollection of their abuse and believe they have lived an ordinary life. I thought I had a very perfect life. I had a wonderful husband and beautiful children and anything money could buy. I lived in a, a beautiful neighborhood um, in Agora Hills and I had no idea I'd ever been abused. These are only the most common altars. Some will have specially designed altars depending on their situation and role. Each altar is a component of the larger machine, the result being that no single identity can rebel against the system as a whole. In America today, there are hundreds of thousands of these multiples from every walk of life, the bum on the street to the corporate executive. Mind control multiples have two basic controllers, their programmers and their owners. Programmers are specially trained individuals with expertise in the mind, conscious, and hypnotherapy. Skilled in the art of breaking down and controlling the mind, they are the masterminds of the system. Each monarch is their work of art, and many victims view them as a godlike figure. 
The truth is that there are slave auctions that very elite people attend to be able to own and buy the best mind control slaves uh, that, that money can buy. Handlers, while being similarly trained, merely maintain and control the slave on behalf of the owner or programmer, ensuring the programming remains intact and bringing forth the correct alters to perform whatever function may be required at various times. Cheers, butterfly. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, and I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Did you hear me, butterfly? Miles to go before you sleep. Perhaps the most notorious individual associated with mind control is Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino. Talking to Dr. Aquino and his wife, um, who, you are a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army. Correct. Now, and how does the Army feel about you being head of the Temple of Set? The Army has known about my religion for um, uh, the entire span of my Army career, which mm -hmm. began in 1968. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, there was a reasonable amount of curiosity, as there has been all the way along, mm -hmm. with um, what exactly is this strange and unusual thing. And I've uh, talked about it in much the same way that I've talked here today on your show about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, the Ar Army has paid uh, very little attention to it. Aquino, the silver-tongued savant of total mind control, served as a U.S. intelligence officer and Army PSYOP expert where he helped perfect the science of creating mind-controlled subjects, garnering an above-top-secret military clearance. A self-described expert in black magic, he joined his friend Anton LaVey's Church of Satan in 1969, where he quickly became a high priest before breaking away to found his own satanic sect. Although having been implicated by multiple alleged trauma-based mind-control victims who recall his bizarre appearance and horrendous abuse, he was never criminally charged. It was here, parents and others allege, that as many as 60 young children were ritualistically abused by soldiers of Satan. Colonel Aquino, we note, sir, for the record, that you were originally implicated in the dreadful charges of child abuse. We note also that no charges were ever brought against you, and presumably you have been cleared. Would you like to comment on why those charges were brought against you? Well, the entire time that uh, the so-called child molestation scandal was occurring at the Presidio, the time period when um, uh, these terrible events were supposedly taking place, I was assigned to the National Defense University in Washington, D.C., and my wife was out there living with me. But is it not a fact that a three-and-a-half-year-old girl identified you as the alleged perpetrator of molestation? No, as uh, a matter of fact, it is not the case. An accusation was made by her stepfather, who was an army chaplain, speaking on behalf of this child. In her original interview with the FBI, she denied ever being molested. Well, I've seen the... I, I, you are innocent until proven guilty. You were never charged in this case. I don't want to belabor the point. I have seen, however, the affidavits for the search warrant of your home, and they indicate the child is speaking to the authorities, not her father. This was after she had been subjected to uh, therapy. At least one victim, a child in daycare at the Presidio military base in California, was able to positively identify Aquino's home and describe with uncanny accuracy its distinctively satanic interior. As part of the investigation, a search warrant was served on the residence of Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino and his wife Lilith. Yes, Lilith. As a result of that search, numerous videotapes, photographs, photo albums, photographic negatives, cassette tapes and address books were confiscated. Most disturbingly, also observed during the search was what appeared to be a soundproof room. However, Aquino nor his wife ever faced charges relating to those allegations. In her riveting autobiographical book, Transformation of America, trauma-based mind control victim Kathy O'Brien names Aquino as one of her primary abusers. O'Brien even claims Aquino made a how-to video using her educating military officials in the skills needed to program slaves, entitled, How to Divide a Personality and How to Create a Sex Slave. 
I know that some of my perpetrators were actually um, known Satanists and some of them were not. Um, I know that um, Sammy Davis Jr. actually painted his little fingernail with red nail polish and was actually part of a satanic group. High voltage handheld stun guns are a handler's necessity for wiping the victim's memory but must be applied within 24 hours of the event to be forgotten. The brain stores memory as short term for roughly a day before it is filed away as long term memory. High voltage scrambles the memories before they can become a cohesive long term memory. Some handlers use a cattle prod or specially designed staff with hidden electric probes. Fritz Springmeier writes in his groundbreaking book that programmer Michael Aquino used just such a satanic staff specially designed to wipe a slave's memory. This is Michael Aquino, who's he head of Temple Asset. He's a mind control programmer. And I don't think that he's got his staff in his hand there in the picture, but he oftentimes carries a staff. That's a uh, staff is like a cattle prod and it will give you electroshock. Monarch multiples almost always bear electric prod or stun gun scars or their resultant moles. However, few outsiders can recognize them as such. Those in the entertainment industry have long been popular targets for mind control. I'm Savannah Guthrie alongside Matt Lauer and Al Roper. Will someone do the, the junior high hug dance? It looks like this. You gotta make it real awkward. That's exactly how you he did it. You have to have a certain amount of distance between yes, the bodies exactly. in junior high. Yes, like they say in Catholic school, leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of uh, memories today, actually. It's a big day in music history. 35 years ago today, Elvis Presley passed away, the king of rock and roll. And as Mark Cohn says in his great song, Walking in Memphis, there's a pretty little thing waiting for the king down in... Uh, yeah, it's like they say in Catholic school, leave room for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> anyway, there is a lot of... The first celebrity mind control subject was a World War II pinup named Candy Jones. Candy was a popular pinup girl in the 40s and 50s. Born Jessica Wilcox to an absent father and abusive mother, Jones developed multiple personality disorder, now called dissociative identity disorder, at an early age to cope with the neglect and abuse she endured. She was highly hypnotizable and possessed a great deal of patriotism, having done several USO tours during World War II. After divorcing from her first husband, Jones was recruited by the CIA. Thrilled at the opportunity to help her country, she allowed Dr. Jensen, a CIA agent, to hypnotize her. He quickly found her alter personalities and developed the strongest one, named Arlene Grant, into the perfect super spy. She was trained to courier messages, seduce a target, and kill with her bare hands, all with complete amnesia following the event. Jones was likely the first of her kind, and as such, she was shown off to intelligence insiders as an example of what such programming could produce. It was not until later in life that, through hypnotic regression, she was able to discover what she truly was, a mind-controlled spy. According to researchers, Marilyn Monroe was the first true celebrity sex kitten. While some historians classify her relationship with the Kennedys as an affair, researchers in mind control have revealed she was actually a presidential model, the highest level of beta sex slaves. These highly prized assets are used to service presidents, executives, and world leaders. Like Candy Jones, Monroe came from an especially abusive background, being shuffled through 11 different foster homes and many abusive environments. She was working as a stripper named Mona at a burlesque club where she met Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan. They had an affair, but it did not end there. Sensing her talent and vulnerability, LaVey, himself a mind control programmer, turned Monroe into a beta sex kitten, as he did with Jane Mansfield. The circumstances surrounding Monroe's death are still shrouded in mystery. A great number of facts point toward murder. Since Marilyn's demise, many other celebrities have lost their lives in similarly suspicious circumstances. To those who are aware of the darker side of the entertainment industry, the truth is quite clear. 
Many current slaves under beta programming pay homage to Monroe as the first presidential model. Coming up, more shocking celebrity victims and handlers right after this. What other famous figures are involved in this perverse form of mind control? Trauma-based mind control victims and whistleblowers Bryce Taylor and Cisco Wheeler have identified Bob Hope as a handler. In her book, Thanks for the Memories, Bryce Taylor writes, My controllers and abusers were not low-level criminals, but instead were some of the so-called adored leaders and entertainers of our country. Hope has been the alleged handler of many Hollywood slaves. Unsurprisingly, many parents are willing to sell their children into total mind control programming to ensure fame and success. This spasm of publicity about what happened in, from Mexico to London it was pretty rough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, weird. Hello. Um. Oh my goodness. Hello. Ew. Strawberry. Um. Yeah, it was a weird. With Britney Spears, so you just go to YouTube, Britney Spears, alter ego, and up comes an interview with Diane Sawyer, where she's talking away, and there's a, a point in the interview where, I can't remember exactly what word Diane Sawyer says, but she kind of repeats the word, and then there's a very distinct switch of state, and you can see her kind of covering for the fact that she's lost track, and she behaves very differently, and then it's gone again. And that as somebody who's written a whole series of books and spoken to hundreds of people with multiple personality, that sure looks like a switch to an alter personality to me. But you can also quite easily find video online of uh, she's coming along in a car, she's leaning out the window, and she's got a pink wig on, and she's talking in a British accent, and she says that she has no idea who this guy is that the reporters have asked her about who's her boyfriend that she'd been dating for like the last six weeks or something. Huh. And the, the paparazzi say they always know they're in for a show when she comes out with a pink wig on. These parents think the final outcome will be worth it. And if the child can't remember the electroshock and abuse, how much can it affect them? Interestingly, Experts have discovered that as advanced and developed as the programming has become, it usually comes unglued between the ages of 27 and 30. When this happens, the victim essentially falls apart and begins behaving extremely erratically, switching alters at inappropriate times. At this point, the victim will be called back in for reprogramming, often under the guise of rehab. We have seen this time and time again with various celebrities such as Britney Spears, Amanda Bynes, Shia LaBeouf, Lindsay Lohan, and many more all having meltdowns around this age range. So let me ask you this. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me? Yeah. What's going on? Why is Dave Chappelle going to Africa? Why does Mariah Carey make a $100 million deal and take clothes off on TRL? It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. Ain't no weak people talking to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. Maybe the environment is a little sick. Once top secret, trauma-based mind control programs are now becoming mainstream fodder for television and movies. Thanks to the brave victims who have managed to come forward, the veil of secrecy surrounding mind control and its terrifying applications is beginning to fade. There is hope. Those who are having flashbacks or remembering horrific abuses often feel that no one will believe them. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. Too often was that the case in the past, but with the power of the internet, what has existed for so long in secrecy is now coming to light. People are waking up, and they're waking up at mass, and it's happening all over this country. Now, themes such as these are becoming mainstream in movies, television shows, and music videos. Once one is aware, the signs are everywhere. In the grand scheme, 
those who commit such acts are few, and the power of humanity is enormous. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up for more videos and documentaries like these. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments and check out my other videos.